Year in championships from Shanghai, China. It's a clash of the South Americans. Gaston Gario versus Fernando Gonzalez. At stake, a spot in the semifinals. One moves on, and one goes home. Tennis Masters Cup from Shanghai, live next. Friendly, hello everybody. Cliff Drysdale alongside Patrick McEnroe. This is the final day in Shanghai of round robin competition, heading all to the semi finals tomorrow and then the championship match on <coughs> Sunday. In our feature match today, round robin competition, as I said, continuing. It is going to be two South Americans, and it's simple. The winner of this one will be in the semi finals. Fernando Gonzalez for Chile and Gaston Gaudio of Argentina. It all comes down to this match in this group. We had the same situation yesterday with Nelbandian and Lubicic. Nelbandian won that. He's through to the semis along with Federer. Debbie Danko has won both his matches. He'll take on Puerto later. And Gonzo uh, against Gaudio coming up. There's Federer. He's lost quite a few sets. In fact, he's put and pushed to three in each of his three wins. But bottom line, he's come through in all of them. Now, Banyan was very impressive yesterday against a, a pretty flat and tired Ivan Lubicic in their match to qualify for the semis. Gaston Gaudio, this man, finally winning a match in the Masters Cup this year, Cliff, which he did earlier in the week against Mariano Puerta, uh, another one of the Argentines in the field. There are four of them. Gaudio taking on Puerta as a last-minute replacement for Rafael Nadal, who pulled out just an hour or two before the match was scheduled. Puerta had been there as an alternate. Comes up a little tweener here, but that's not going to get it done. Gaudio comfortable at net. Now look, obviously both these players much more comfortable on the red stuff, on the dirt. Gaudio, a little more versatility, able to get to net, knock off the volley, and he wins it three and five. Gabby Denko now taking on Gaudio. This was both players had won one match coming into this one. Gabby Denko had taken out Agassi. A little frustrado from Mr. Gaudio. And he never, by the way, Gaudio never beaten Gabby Denko. You know, he played him five times all on clay, but this, this condition is much different, pretty quick. And, uh, you know, Gaudio, despite being ranked quite a bit higher, and he got to a career high number five based on his consistency, his clay court record, of course, winning the French last year. But I like Gonzo in this one. Fernando Gonzalez, first Chilean to play in this event since uh, our old buddy Marcelo Rios, the talented one back in 98. But uh, Gonzo, I mean, this is great. He's, a, he's back in Chile four, five, six days ago. He's at a big party. He comes home. And uh, he gets a, his dad has to come and get him to get his cell phone off. You know, he's been out partying all night. His dad comes over and says, listen, you got two hours to decide if you want to go to Shanghai. It's the second alternate. He thinks about it for a while. It's a 30-hour trip. All right, I think I might have a chance to play. And guess what? He gets the chance when Agassi pulls out, takes on Puerta. Some good backcourt play. Both they split the first two sets, but it was all Gonzo in the third. Beautiful dipper forehand pass there. He runs away with the final set. And he says, hey, it's unbelievable. I mean, I've always dreamed of playing in this event, the Masters Cup. Now I've got a chance to reach the semifinals. And I think a darn good chance. I like his chances a lot in this match on this surface against Gaston Gaudi. Yeah, he's the big hitter, obviously, of the two. So if, if that's an advantage for him, then it increases his chances here in Shanghai. Two groups of four, eight players qualify. This is the year-ending championship. Uh, last time they met these two, Gaudio took Gonzalez out easily. That was at the World Team Cup. That's on clay. This is a very, which is rather, a very different surface to the one that uh, they are playing in here. Again, year-ending championship. Used to call this the World Championships. They qualified to get here. Action live after this. ESPN 2's presentation of the 2005 Tennis Masters Cup. Brought to you by AOL. Want a better internet? You belong at AOL. 
Penn Tennis Balls, the number one choice of ATP players and proud sponsor of the ATP Master Series. And Gibson Guitar. This holiday, only a Gibson is good enough. Good early morning to you in the USA, everybody. Uh, it is the year-ending championship here in Shanghai, China. It is 10 off to 7 in the evening, so this is prime time. There's a price to pay for you back in the U.S. Uh, when these major events happen so far away. Challenging in Australia, for example, and thanks for joining us. As this 26-year-old from Buenos Aires, Argentina, Gaston Gaudia looks to get to the semi-final of this year-ending championship. Make no mistake that uh, the Grand Slams are what the players aspire to win, because that's what they what they remember. But but this this year-ending championship sort of sits out there on its own, and after the Slams, this is a title of huge significance. The winner will take home over one and a half million dollars if he's undefeated. Looks like Roger Federer is certainly in line to do that. And uh, it's these two. It's Gonzalez, man you're looking at here, and Gaston Gaudio. Um, PMAC, I understand about the field, and it's disappointing. It's, uh, it's really, I'm not sure who's to blame for it. I'm not sure that there is blame for injuries. But nevertheless, these two sit on the edge here of an historic opportunity for them as individual players. Well, for sure. I mean, for them to... To get into the semis, I mean, as you heard from Gonzalez, he said, "Look, it's a dream for me to be here. It's always one of my goals to to get to this event, to be one of the elite eight. Now, you're not quite the elite eight based on all the pullouts and the fact that Roddick didn't show up, Hewitt didn't show up, Safin, uh, Agassi pulled out, Agassi pulled out, out Nadal did. That's Horacio De La Pena, who's the coach of Fernando Gonzalez has done an excellent job with Gonzo, really adding, you know, we talk so much about the power game of Gonzalez, and he does have that with the big forehand especially, but he's added some nice variety to his game. He can use the backhand slice, he can use a bit of finesse as well, but as you suggested just earlier, Cliff, I think it's the power on this surface particularly that, that is an advantage for Gonzalez in this matchup with Gaudio, who likes that slower rhythm, the clay court rhythm, stand back and really have time to hit his ground strokes. And Gonzo will try to take away that time today. Again at stake, a place in the final four for this year's tennis, men's tennis tour. Fault on the first point, love 15. Gaudio is the youngest of three kids. But a brother Diego and a sister Julieta. He was a soccer player as a kid in addition to tennis. No surprise there. No surprise. I'm from South America. That's what Gaudio needs to do. He's got decent hands at the net. He's got to force himself to be a little more aggressive than, than really he wants to be. And hope he can get in good position there. You don't have to play a great volley on this surface because the ball skids and stays pretty low. Be confident up there. Be compact with your swing. So you're used to volleying on clay, Cliff. You're used to sort of dipping it, dropping it low, dropping the wrist a little bit. You don't want to do that much on this surface. Because the surface helps you. It's quicker. Yeah. p Mac, I've got a little um, uh, trivia for you. Okay. Um, Gaston Gaudio was ranked 44. Right. When he won the French. Right. Uh, uh, two years ago. Now, there, there are a couple of guys who won a Grand Slam who were ranked lower than that. Well, Kirtan was 66, right, when he won the French. 
That's really good. I didn't even have my book for that. I didn't even have my dad. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's take a listen here to Gaston Gaudia and talking about qualifying. I'm going to try to give my best and I would love to win the match, qualify for the semifinals and that would be great but uh, playing in the surface is tough for me so I don't know, I would love to to at least play my best tennis so then we'll see what happens. So we will indeed see what happens one game into this match. Okay, Pimek, so that's good. K that's Kirtan, good that was good. Kirtan, okay. Yeah. Well, the year Agassi won the Open, he, now he was like 30. Oh, one of the years he won the U.S. Open, remember he was unseeded? Right. Uh, that's, not like, that's not below 44. Remember the guy won Wimbledon from... Oh, well, Ivan Isovic. Yeah. yeah. Because he had to get a wild card to get, get in. Right. And then well, Mark Edmondson, I, you know, that's, a, that's before you were born, I think. He won the Australian, right? Yeah. That was, in, uh, that was when nobody played the Australian. Exactly. Basically. Nine at the moment, ended up uh, last year at number 10. He actually had a more consistent year this year. I mean, obviously, he won the big one in 2004 at the French. Gaudio with five titles this year, all of them on clay. Yep, that beautiful shot. Oh, what a sweet backhand that is. One of those that he won was in the start in Switzerland. As you watch this one again. Did you ever play start, Patrick? I did. I played there once, yeah. How pretty is that in the mountains? Beautiful. The altitude there. You ever play Kitzbühel? No. That's, sort of, that's a really... That, that's real altitude there, I think. Isn't no, it? not so much altitude, but just a really Beautiful. nice place in Austria. Beautiful. Mountains. Also in the mountains. Right, so able to win those two cardio lost to David Ferrer of Spain and the French this year as the holder So, Gonzo rips the forehand. Of course, Gaudio up there in clay court wins this year. Number two, Nadal was the dominant force on the dirt. 50 and two, and his two losses coming early in the clay court season. Guillermo Mulcoria also some solid results in the French Open finalist, Mariano Puerta. 28 wins. His appeal is still going on, by the way, Pu Puerta, for his what was a supposed positive drug test from during the French Open. Be nice to get that thing worked out a little bit more quickly, wouldn't it? And still have him playing out here. It's a bit of a joke. If he is he's still, he's, well, his problem is he could get two or three years suspension. Oh, he could get lifetime suspension. That, that would be he's already been suspended. So that would be it for him. But if he's innocent, it'd be nice to know that, too. Yep. I'm not sure what it is that takes so long. Love 15, I guess the appeal process. One apiece for a set. Sure was... Uh, Puerto was good this year to French, I'll say that. Uh, it's best ever tournament. Yeah. 
Is Nadal going to be able to translate his game better than a guy like Gaudio, for example? Yes, definitely. Why? Uh, he's got the ability to step inside the court, be a little more aggressive, control the center of the court. And yes, he can play defense, but he's basically he can play better offense. And obviously, Nadal struggled at, at Wimbledon and the U.S. Open where the courts are, are, are quicker. But you look at what he did in, in Canada, which is... Miami. He, Miami gets to the final. Even Madrid indoors, Nadal was able to win that. And that's a quick condition. I like what I'm seeing from Gario there, here, there. He's looking to come in. He's looking to jump on the short ball immediately. Maybe he's figuring out this uh, faster game on the indoor courts. Sets him up. That one right there. Pretty good rip here from Gonzalez, but again, solid, firm wrist there from Gaston. You won't say too many good things about Gaston uh, in his last round robin match, and David Denka clipped him. No, his, his, his attitude was terrible. His body language was much better today. I mean, even his game, though, you know, he was saying he's playing too far back. There's no way he can handle right. this guy. And so we'll see whether the, it really is different. Of course, he's playing against a different player, too. Gonzalez got an older sister, Patricia. She played some in Miami Dade. It's Franco Davin there, the coach of Gaudio. Former tour player from, from Argentina. Gonzalez had an outstanding junior career finished number four in singles in the junior world rankings, number two in doubles. He won uh, Roland Garros junior title over Juan Carlos Ferrero. Great point here. the break you'll serve with the 2-1 lead when we come back live to Shanghai China. Break a serve to Fernando Gonzalez. P Mac yes in the last game saying how Gaston Gaudio looked like he was uh, you know playing differently, hitting the ball well and then he went down in flames in that game. <laughs> and uh, now you had Gonzalez. to point that out didn't you? Just a little reminder. <laughs> Pimac, if you're coaching Gaudio, you're going to tell him to stand a little closer because uh, he's like 8, 10 feet behind the baseline to return the serve. Probably not on the return of serve, but we would certainly try to tell him to get up on the baseline as quickly as he can. And obviously he's comfortable back there. He needs a little more time to time the return. He's just not an Agassi-type returner. Now he's talking. He's probably asking his coach that question right now. 
See, there he tried to take it early. Look what happened. Probably, that's probably exactly what happened. This coach just said, well, let's try to move in a little bit. Of course, you're not supposed to do that. Not supposed to what, move in or talk to coach? Or okay. well, you're not supposed to talk to him about anything. strategy. Well, really, anything. You like that rule, or you think that uh, that you should? I should like it. I know you want to change. You'd like to see it coaching, or at least a. I, I think I could be convinced that the, and I've heard you talk about this, the idea of maybe you can have one meeting per set with the coach. I think I could be convinced that that's okay. But I'm a little bit of the old school. Of what I like about tennis, it being a one-on-one -on -one sport and it being unique. Don't you think that, it would be funny if, if, so if, if we could say, I, as announcers, you've got the guy I this, do what think do you that think would be, I do think that would be, be good for the sport overall, yes. Just say once a set for 45 seconds. Now, will we be able to hear what he says? Would you have him mic'd? Yes. Now the television producers are really in your head, Cliff. Listen, I don't know what I think until the <laughs> television producers right. tell me. This is uh, not a good drop shot, to say the least. Gonzalez there in plenty of time. This is a chance here for Gonzalez. He's got the one break and it left 30 in this one. The wheels could fall off quickly for Gaudio. Patrick, you know what I think about this high ball toss uh, of uh, Gaudio's. It just, to me, it just takes too much off the serve. And that, on a surface like this, really hurts him. I would not see, while we're talking strategy and stuff here, I wouldn't see any reason not to go to Gaston and say, look, pull the ball toss down, let's juice it up a How bit. How can you do that? You can't do that. You can't change your service motion based on the surface. Not difficult. To, well, based on the surface, no. I'd bring it down on any surface because it's going to get him juiced up, give him more power. every forehand and then just unloading the backhand down the line. That's nasty. So you're going to tell Gaudio to change his service motion that's going to affect his play on clay. Make him the worst play court player. No. Where he makes all his money. Why would it do that? It's going to help him one play. Four one to one. Break Gonzalez. Skyscrapers of uh, China's largest city, Shanghai. It's a bustling city. This Fernando Gonzalez, four games to one, two breaks in the first set. And here's your tournament summary. David Denko will take on Nalbandian in the second semifinal. Federer will play the winner of this one. And the Bryan brothers clinching number one for the second time in their careers. They'll take on Loja Santoro in the semifinals of doubles action. Gonzalez at 4-1, two breaks. Biggest moment of the season, well, make it, make it his career, actually. Athens Olympics. Captured a bronze medal in singles and gold in doubles with Masu. And as I remember at the time, they said this was the first gold medal Chile ever won. Ever. That was incredible. I was there as the coach of the, of the U.S. team. And uh, we had two, two American guys in the semis against the two Chileans, Marty Fish. And of course, the Taylor Dent. And uh, 
Gonzalez lost to Fish. And then Dent went down to Masu. And then that uh, gold medal match, a five-setter, where Masu was basically on one leg, it seemed like, for half the time. And he comes back and wins it in five. And then they go out after that and play the doubles. Best of five sets and win that in five sets, Gonzalez and Masu, to win the gold in doubles. So they are serious heroes in Chile. losing interest quickly here, Gaudio. Did not get down for that volley, kind of lackadaisical when he came in. Talking about <coughs> losing interest, Patrick, the postscript on Lubicic yesterday. What, what was that? He, just I, he was flat. I think he's just completely exhausted when he took the court. All the tennis he's played, and he's played some big, big matches. He's got Davis Cup final coming up. And by the way, Nalbandian played played an outstanding match. I mean, he was returning all the big serves of Lubicic. I think if Lubicic had been able to use his serve to keep himself in the match early, he you know he might have got his energy going, but just wasn't there for him. Oh. That drop volley will work on clay, but uh, you got to hit this very short for it to make any make an impression on this surface because it just stands up. Gonzalez is funny. He puts that thing away. He still juices it up. He, he, he could just chip that thing in without any problem. But he has only basically one speed, Gonzo. Another look. This right here. Bam! <laughs> well, there's nothing he likes more than seeing a ball just sitting up there like that for him to rip. Set point. Easy first set. Fernando Gonzalez of Chile sets one over Gaston Gaudio. ESPN 
Team's presentation of the 2005 Tennis Masters Cup. Brought to you by AOL. Want a better internet? You belong at AOL. And Waterford Crystal. Proud partners of the ATP and the Tennis Masters Cup. Welcome back to Shanghai, everybody. This is uh, round robin competition, final day. We're heading toward the semifinals tomorrow of the Tennis Masters Cup. It's the year-ending championship of men's tennis. Again, the top eight players play all year to qualify for the year-ending championships. They're divided into two groups of four, and this is, as I said, final day round robin competition. Winner of this one advances to the semis. Semi-finals at 10 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow night. Oh, yes, a slider, swinger serve. And the Gonzalez sending a message here to Gaudio. A little action on that one, huh? Yeah, I say, they're sort of saying, look. Um, Perfectly happy to win this one and one in about 46 minutes. Got that right. Judging by the play we're seeing from Gaudio, that seems a very reasonable possibility at this point. Check your AOL between the lines. Look too far between the lines on this one. This is just been domination from Fernando Gonzalez. Claudio, there's no shot in this one. Tries the drop shot, a horrendous attempt there. And Gonzalez saying thank you very much. Just a few days ago, he was getting ready for his off season for the holiday season back in Chile. He's very much in control of getting to the semifinals. Our AOL between the lines, all Gonzo in the opening set. Matter of fact, he hasn't lost a match here in China. 15 love in this game. He took under Agassi's place. Agassi lost his first uh, match and then pulled out. point there and a drop shot on the return. Gaudio may have to rethink his attempts at drop shots. They're just miserable right now. Still a couple of game points to even up the second set. This is a completely one-sided affair so far. Gaudio's on the board in the second. It's one apiece. Gaudio with some fans in the stands, as you can see. Let me just uh, clarify for you the prize money situation. It's uh,
total of nearly four and a half million dollars. Winner will take over, uh, undefeated winner, over a million and a half. 90,000 participation fee. So if you make it here to Shanghai, then you get 90,000. And then you get 120,000 for every match. So, um, so for Fernando Gonzalez, he'll get two thirds of 90,000 because Agassi played one match. And then he picks up another 240,000. Assuming he wins this one, yeah. If he wins this. Chance to win a lot more. Although he have to play Federer. 370 if he wins that one. Extra. Gracio is constantly moving around there when he's watching the match. He's into it. Coach of Gonzalez. He's in Argentine, by the way. He was a tough baseline player, lefty. In fact, both coaches of these two are lefty grinders from Argentina, Franco Davine and Dalapina. in the second set, 2-1, he easily won the first. Gaudi had a serve and we come back to the track. This is about the time in the first set when the wheels fell off for Gaston Gaudio. Playing for $120,000 in this round robin group and more than more than that, a spot in the semi-finals here. Patrick and I, we're talking too much, really, about the money at this stage. Mm -hmm. We need to go there anymore. But there are also points here which are a big deal at the year-ending championship for these players, which is huge to, for them, uh, seedings and getting into tournaments. How about being a professional? How about that? Good point. <laughs> I mean... How about coming out and giving it everything every time you step out there? Is that is that such a crazy idea? I'm asking a lot. I think so. Spot technology genius is telling us that uh, there's a huge difference in the ground stroke speed between these two. The 62 to 76 MPHs. It's uh, obviously Fernando Gonzalez who's got the much harder swing and faster ball. Gets his racket under it. Gaudio's there to knock it into the open court.
two apiece in there. Semi-final action tomorrow night at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Here on ESPN 2. Roger Federer will take on the winner of this match in semi-final number one. Again, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. And then Davidenko and now Bandian. Tennis is really more and more unpredictable other than the fact that Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal were so dominant last year or this year. But consider the Gaudio story of last year. He goes to on the clay courts. So he loses first round in Estoril. Monte Carlo goes out second round. He loses first round in Rome, first round in Hamburg. Then he gets to Paris and wins it. Five sets over Guillermo Cañas, who's no slouch on clay. Yuri Novak, five sets. Enquist, five sets. He beats Hewitt now Bandin and then that remarkable Guillermo Coria match. And suddenly he's a Grand Slam champion. And he's got three break points. First opportunity for Gaudio to get a break. Teeth into this match. Damn. One quickly erased. to break for Gaston. Tennessee. He doesn't mind playing. Going for broke, even on the big points. Biting those nails. Co coach of Gaudio, Franco Davine. that often when he gets that easy forehand he'll hit it right down the middle because he knows that the opponents more than likely going to guess one way or the other so he'll often rip that straight down the middle it's a smart play it's exactly what Gaudio did and point Gonzalez of Chile and Argentina respectively watching this uh, these two South Americans batting it out in China first set Gonzalez mediocre effort in that first set from this man Gaston Gallio but 
little closer in this set. He's had chances. In fact, three of them on Gonzalez's serve did not convert. So we're on serve 2 3. Reminder that the winner of this match will be in the semi finals of this year ending championship. That's the good news. The bad news is it's Roger Federer that's waiting for the winner. I was watching <coughs> Sports Center early edition this morning. I was uh -huh. very proud of our boys because they were talking about John McEnroe and his record all those years ago and how Roger Federer here at this year in the championship can catch him, losing Good. just three matches all year. It's nice to get a little, little Sports Center play for us. Yeah. Makes sense when you look at you look at the history and you see what Federer has done and what he's doing. This guy should be uh, Sportsman of the Year, Roger Federer. N in tennis, absolutely. No, in, in sports. His domination, his class, his integrity. Something. No negative vote for me on that. Inside the court, it's pretty lethal. We're hanging around in the second set, three apiece. Time for these, uh, and at the end of the year, Pimac always come up with the, you know, the best and the worst and etc. Tennis. Uh, how about, how about, who would have said at the beginning of the year that between two players? They would have won 22 tournaments so far. Not, not I. Two players, 22 tournaments, 11 apiece. Nadal and Federer. So in this, in this era when everything's supposed to be so even. Thank you. You get that, Patrick? Spanish? I'm not sure what he was. Line ball, maybe. Yeah, maybe it skipped off a line. Yeah. Some things I just can't understand. I'm not talking about the language there. Eh? <laughs> He hits the ball so hard, it's very difficult to get into a groove. He's the one who sort of controls everything. This is another area of his game that's improved. There's a little feel around the net from Gonzalez. He's worked hard on that. Game point Gonzo.
crunch time. Is that, can I use that cliche here? Sure, why not? Thanks. Uh, thank you. Uh, love 15 here for Gaston Gaudio. Down 3 4, down a set. Be a good time for him to bear down and not make dumb errors. Or he will be history here in Shanghai. like that. Yeah. Did you maybe sense this coming, Cliff? <laughs> you did, didn't you? Oh, man. points for Gonzo. Don't tell me a double fall. Don't say it, no, Cliff. No double. Oh! It's right on that one. You might have anticipated it also. Maybe just tried to put a little too much of an angle because, you know, whatever, this is you know, we're watching it as another tennis match before. Fernando Gonzalez, you told that cute story about him. Doesn't have his own towels here, by the way, so he's using Andy Roddick's towels because he was the second alternate. And so this is a Cinderella story for Fernando. Break chance. securing his place in the semis as the last minute alternate. Serving for a spot in the semifinal and a date with Roger. of a win, a $120,000 round robin pot sweetener. And Horacio says, okay, no more doubles. <laughs> Let's close this out. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> there, that's Gonzalez for you. He double faults on the previous point. Down 15-30. Any other player in the world would say, put the serve in, kick it in. Gonzo says, no, I'm going for broke. Oh, that's what makes him fun to watch. No fear whatsoever. 30 all two points away from the semi-final spot. Or not. Oh, he is a little tight. Yeah. Come back and serve for Sentno Gonzalez winning that one easily. Back live in a minute. A little pressure in that last game. Gonzalez serving for the match. He elbowed it as uh, Gaston Gaudio stays alive, so he's serving now to get even in the second. of errors here. Fifteen all. Gonzalez tightening up in the previous service game. His chance to make the semis was on his racket. Being saying, come on, come on, Gaston, you're not out of this thing. His coach. Six double fault there from Gaudio. Ah, oh, ooh, got it in. That's too tough, and now a couple of match points for Gonzalez. His coach Horacio Sanchez, uno más. Radio saves one. Gaston knows how to fight, and remind you that uh, he played uh, four five setters in winning the French Championships last year. Four. Oh, if you want a little change up, a little kick serve. That's a smart play because he knows that he's been struggling a bit on the second. Not only double faulting, but Gonzalez has been. Attacking the second serve. See if he tries that again. Get that first serve in. Kick it up a little bit. That surprised Gonzalez there. He tried to do that again. Just missed it. Oh, 
Oh. Gift. How does that happen? Third match point coming up. More terror on his face than there is on Fernando's match point. Gonzo saw it coming, the kick serve. Not sure how smart a move that was, though. Particularly when Gaudio has been making so many errors off the first ball. The match point, get it in play. That's where Gonzalez's go for broke strategy can get him into trouble sometimes on the big points. But it's fun to watch, it's fun to see him go for big shots, but... No! Oh, that wasn't even close to the court. This is a chance for him to get a fourth match point. Holy mackerel. You want to talk about bricking an overhead. That thing's not even in the vicinity of the court. And he played it perfectly up until that point. Can you say t -t tight <laughs> I think they're both t -t tight Game point for Gadia to get back here on serve in the second. Play by Gaudio. He had the chance to come in. Good passing shot. Kept it low. So strange how sometimes at the end you just realize you got to win it in the tennis. Uh, it just gets better and better. And then sometimes then you get this, as you said, to title g, -g, -g gag and <laughs> you see got some terrible play in the last few games. And Gaudio, another game point. So it's five, it's five apiece. This is really amazing. Patrick, I, you know, you get all these <coughs> speaking at engagements, assignments all over the country, Davis Cup captain. What do you tell? How do you respond to the questions that you inevitably get? How do you, re you know, when you're tight, what do you do? I mean, what do you do I in think these that, situations? I think you have to remind yourself to, to move your feet, you know, to really remind yourself of that and, and play with a little more margin for error. You know, obviously play to your strengths. Some, some players like to you know, hit an approach shot with a little more margin, get into net a little bit more. But there's an example there of Gonzalez not moving his feet too much. And that, that's the first thing to go when you get a little bit nervous, you get a little tight. The movement, the quick little steps to set up. The other thing is slow down. Gonzalez is playing so quickly here. And that gets him in the trouble. He's not taking any time. You go to the towel here. Take a couple of deep breaths. Do the Mary Pierce thing, you know? Take a couple of deep breaths. Play with your hair. Well, we sort of laugh at Mary to go through the way she goes through that whole routine, but it helps her. <laughs> helps her deal with m uh, pressure moments.
But Gonzalez, I, I mean, you got to feel sorry for him, I suppose, because this has been a horrible gag for him. He had three set match points, in fact. Served for it the game before that. Served for it. Great points. He can bludgeon his way out of another situation here. 1540. He's in danger of bludgeoning his way into a situation that he, he may not be able to get out of. Second serve, risky out wide, pays off. on the second. Gonzalez out here just shakes his head. So what, what can you do? Yeah, you can't, you can't predict it. chance to serve for the set if he can win this point. something spectacular because what's going to be going through his mind right now I just served for it for a semi-final spot here in the year-ending world championship called the tennis masters cup but then I had three set points all squandered Got a few demons rolling around in his head now, and that's that's part of the big challenge of this game is for trying to forget about it. And playing from this point on, it's one of the toughest things to do, particularly when you blow a lead like that. And a chance to, he could, should be in the locker room now, getting getting himself set to play Federer in the semis. Excellent topspin lob from Gaudio on a dead run. The mistake he made, though, Gaudio, was not immediately getting into position after this. He sort of stopped. See him standing there? And that cost him because he couldn't get up to that ball. He didn't think Gonzalez was going to be able to do anything with this. Hit that lob, and you got to scramble back immediately back to the middle of the court on the baseline. He 
keeps coming in, though, Gabio, even though not his most comfortable position. He's moving forward. And a nice little chopper. Play from Gaudio. Superb pass there. Gonzalez. So the reflex pass is yeah. better, isn't it, rather than think about it yeah, too at much? At this point, right. Open champ of last year has leveled this match. It is, believe it or not, after all you've seen and how close Gonzalez came, Gaston Gaudio, who will have the chance to stay in this thing and be in the semi final of this year's ending champ. Live coverage from Shanghai and the Xi Young Stadium, 15,000 seats can be. 15,000 spectators rather can be accommodated here in 15,000 seats so you've got the final round robin match here for these two and the winner of this match will play Federer tomorrow. Fernando Gonzalez won the first set easily gets the break in the second looks like it's going to be totally routine for him. But he gagged it when he served for it, and it was Gaston Gaudio who won the second set. First game, third set. Still Gonzalez's match to win or lose. He's still got the firepower and the bigger guns on this surface. His question now is can he can he mentally get it together? It's just what he needs here. A good clean opening game to start the set. Relax his mind. 
Got to think about now winning this set. Trying to forget about the last one. And that's what he does. BNP Hariba is a major sponsor of Great uh, Tennis Masters Cup. One to Gonzalez. BNP Paraba match summary, Patrick. You know, certainly turned around quite a bit in the second set as Gaudio able to take advantage of his opportunities. He broke twice. He didn't have any chances to break in the first. The numbers getting closer in the winner to error department. It was completely one sided in the first set. And I think Gaudio made a smart decision, Cliff. He took a little bit off that first serve, got the percentage up. Didn't expose that, that weak second serve of his on this surface. Not that weak on clay because he gets a good kick on it. But here, it doesn't get up as high. Smart first serve from Gaudio gets it up high. Gaudio reminds me a little bit of Correcha, uh, the way that he plays. Nothing, nothing fancy, but he stays in there, grinds it out. And hit too, he can't hit many winners because he doesn't have the juice. But he's not, uh, he's not going away in this match. Ready for another trivia question, Patrick? Sure. About time for that. Two thousand. <laughs> Last year's Roland Garros. Yep. Uh, Gaudio wins it. Right. Beats now Bandin in the semi-final. Who did Coria beat in the semi-final? Unlikely candidate for clay. Semi-final. Oh, it was uh, Henman. <laughs> you, you're right on top of this. That oh, was a great, great run. Remember how well he played those first yeah. sort of set and a half? <laughs> What's going to happen to Henman next year, Cliff? That's, a, that's a big question. Yeah, he, he had a bad year this year. Not finished well. Had some injury trouble at the end of the year. I hate to say it because I love watching Timmy play, but I think uh, he's hitting. I think he's hitting west. Or south? <laughs> in, the, <laughs> in the dust. That's, well, look where he's standing. Gonzalez when he tried that shot. He was right where that writing is in the Tennis Masters Cup. That's a good six feet behind the baseline. You don't need to be a tennis genius to figure out that that's not the place to try the drop shot from.
yeah. Well, he deserved that point, Gaudia, for his hustle. Great scrambling. Looked like Gonzo had the point one there, but a good defensive backhand chipped it low. Excellent reaction there. He thought he had the winner here. It took sort of a funky bounce there. And he had the wherewithal to stay in it. And all of a sudden, Cliff, remember that 30 all, 30 love point. He tries that drop shot, thinking, okay, I'm up 30 love, not that big of a deal. It may turn out to be a real big deal. Break point. Well, that gets him out of trouble. If you just joined us, a uh, reminder, this is the round robin competition, final day of round robin competition, and it's pretty simple. The winner of this match will be in the semifinals. And that's an example of a, of a good adjustment for the quicker courts from Gaudio. He's cutting that ball off, taking it a little bit early, and a good clean return. That caught Gonzalez by surprise. Another break point. Kasev goes to Gaston Gaudi and Gonzalez is going to remember this match if he loses it for a long time. Missed opportunities. Looks like a little bit like downtown Tokyo, isn't it? It's not though. It's Shanghai, this city that combines the past with modern buildings and skyscrapers that you're looking at now and hosting Tennis Masters Cup live coverage from Shanghai. First set, Gonzalez 6 1. Gets a break in the second, serves for it. Fails, gets broken again. We're on. We're even now at one set apiece, but on uh, break a serve rather for Gaudio. to feel the thought process of Fernando Gonzalez and it's not pretty because feel the pain yeah yeah look at them now Gaudio just brimming with confidence first ball winner off the forehand quickly to 40 love He's got three games to one in the third. Now the problem <coughs> compounds itself for Fernando Gonzalez because he is as tight as a drum as you've seen since he started serving for that second set. He's down a break and he's serving. And for Gaston Gaudio, he has got to be he's a, now as mentally as tough as nails. He's got to be thinking, get me the insurance break. And this has been a huge 
capital H turnaround. Well, there's certainly uh, no lead is safe in this match. And with the things that have gone on, if you're Gaudio, you, you, you don't go through the motions on your return games like, say, Erotic could or even a Federer could. Quick Pat, indoor court. The other thing you pointed out earlier that's still true, Patrick, is that uh, Fernando Gonzalez is he's quickened up the pace to where, you know, it's like, get this over with. He is not taking his time. have match points when he served for it, but he did on the next serve game of Gaston Gaudios. It was 15-40, right? And then he had another one. Yes. Anyway, Gonzalez holds. So he's within one game, but it's Gaudio who's got the break in the third. Gaston Gaudio about to serve with a lead in the third set now, 3-2 be too repetitive for you but in case you just joined us we hope that you will join us for Roger Federer versus the winner of this match at 10 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow afternoon Zhejiang Tennis Center in Shanghai Who do you like in that, Cliff? Davy Denko, Nalbandian match. Who do I like in that? Yeah. I like Davy Denko. Really? I like Nalbandian. Well, I knew that whoever I said you'd go for the, uh, the <laughs> other. <laughs> I know your history with picks, so I'm in good shape. You weren't impressed by that by that Lubicic? I mean, the, the win over Lubicic by Nelbandi, and boy, he played well there. Took Federer to three. down a little bit early there. The fault has been a problem. No, no. No, 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 no. I like the way that David Dinka chewed up on uh, Gaston Gaudio, Patrick. That's why I was sort of going for him. He'd never beaten Gaudio before, and I, the surfaces aside, um, you know, he's. They're both actually very solid, so it's going to be tight. But David Dinka. Nalbandian. Of course, the Federer match against the winner, this is going to be tight also. Yeah, that'll be a tough one to pick. Oh, boy. Double fault number nine. From Gaudio. And that thing barely reached the net. You know, it's just unbelievable. I mean, as many matches as we've watched over the years, there are two types of matches there where two guys are, or gals are playing really well, and they both understand as combatants against each other that the other one is playing well and the, the standard gets better toward the end because it's got to. And then there's this. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's this where you have two players who realize that the other one can just give it away because they are so tight. I understand there's a lot at stake. But uh, the net result is just the opposite.
That's a great point. What a beautiful backhand there from Gaudio. So much action on that ball. Angled cross court, landed inside the service box. And that set him up for the forehand winner. For those of you <coughs> who are planning your weekend's uh, tennis watching and you are warmly invited to join us, we've been saying 10 o'clock Saturday, our graphics, and then backed up by my words, it's not 10 o'clock, it's 11, 11 Eastern time tomorrow night for these two semifinals. Finally, he plays a good drop shot from the proper position and executes it well. That, that attempt at drop shots has gotten him into trouble numerous times in this match. Oh! oh. What? Hello, Gonzo. Where were you? Stick saving a beauty by Gaudio, but where in the world was Gonzo? <laughs> Those old, where's Waldo? Where's Gonzo? Ah, uh, that is it good. What's the call? It's white. No. I called it good. Okay. Wayne McEwen in the chair. That was an overrule, I believe. Let's look again. It wow. slips the line. Lions lady calling Lions it out, out, as you can see, and then the overrule. This coach isn't going to be able to do much about it. Gaudio has to be real careful here. He can let these things bother him. He's up a break. Gotta remind himself to stay in it here, stay in it mentally. Too much on the line. Bizarre. It just keeps getting more bizarre. So it is game to Gonzalez. Gaudio will serve it for three. Aston Gaudio with a break in the third for three. But I would fasten my seatbelt if I were you into uh, this match because the old cliche anything can happen is true. It was Gonzalez who was totally in control when the first set 6 1. Second set gets the break. Looks like it's routine. Serves for it. And then, then the gag set in and uh, he failed. Lost his serve a second time. Had three match points on Gaudio's serve. Gaudio wins the second set and he's up a break in the third. 15 love. Unleashes that forehand.
Fernanda Gonzalez and Nicholas Massou became huge national celebrities and favorites in Chile when they won gold in the doubles as partners last year at the Olympics. Oh, yes. Took a lot to eclipse the uh, interesting, I guess is the nicest way you could put it, Marcelo Rios, who was the number one player in Chile for so long. In fact, he was number one in the world for a short while. Marcelo. So if Marcelo had the work ethic of these two boys, Gonzalez and Masu, he would have been number one for a lot longer. Three Gaston Cardio recap 120,000 for an a round robin win, so that's at stake. But as importantly, maybe more a shot at Roger Federer in the semi final of this year ending world championship. on his end there. Looked like Gaudio had the point one with that ripping backhand down the line. That one, with the squash shot from Gonzo, keeps him in the point. And Gaston did not do enough with that approach. Paid the price. I mean, there is no telling with Gonzalez. It's very frustrating. I mean, Gaston Gaudio is no slouch about the court, but even he cannot do anything about a shot like this. Well, big backhand up the line from Gonzalez. Gutting his way back into this match, trying to get the break back here. Even this set at four apiece. Huge point. Oh! Hello! Gonzalez breaks back. Might as well just call him the John Daly of tennis. Just rip it and rip it. Pizza coming up next when we are through with our live coverage from Shanghai, China, of this year-ending World Championship. It's it's a, a tour that encompasses both the ATP Tour and the Grand Slams. Matter of fact, there was a time when the Slams had their own year-ending championship, and so did the Tour. It was very confusing. One of the rare displays of uh, cooperation in tennis. It's now one. Combined production of the ATP Tour and the Slams. Oh! Well, the tennis is finally starting to come around, though. 
The hustle there from Gaudio pays off. Still a bad miss there from Gonzalez it was, on I the mean, final volley. Yeah, he, he had that lined up. Like 15 at 4-4. Four, four. if not the best point of the match. Latter stages and you have the feeling now as Gonzalez is bent over trying to get his breath back. That now they do know that they're going to have to play good stuff to win. And now it's becoming worthy of what's at stake here. A place in the semifinals. Gaudio was down, match points in the second, 6-1, 5-3, fought back, and was up a break here in the third. points. Totally legitimate, by the way, that uh, there would be no, be no total understanding from Fernando Gonzalez. Understanding that he got hit. Very legitimate passing shot into the body. moment of great drama in Shanghai. Great point. Gonzalez saves one, still break point Gaudio. Horacio <laughs> de la Pina, Gonzalez's coach. An hour ago, I thought he he thought he had this wrapped up as you go for that big second serve here down the middle and he went for it and got it this crowd is a little more like it was in 2002 when there were so many close matches that the seesaw affairs like this one is turning out to be. That one eventually won by Leighton Hewitt. <laughs> the 
at least you get the feeling that both coaches are actually coaching during the match, so maybe it's all even, right? not hiding the fact that he's talking to his coach. I'm surprised that there's no warning on this. Well, that was a great comeback in that game. From Fernando Gonzalez. And that's the thing that can happen. Immediately, our coverage here, live coverage. Tennis Masters Cup, year-ending event. Eight players qualify. They play throughout the year, Grand Slams and ATP Tour. Tournaments, all knockout. This one is not. This is round-robin competition until the semifinals tomorrow. Final day round-robin competition. On serve, third set, Gaudio serving. Percentage play there. And he tries to drop shot from some bizarre positions on the court. Oh. Brain cramp. Okay, point. Looks like we may see a tie break for this one. Five all. Or not, because uh, that's a prediction. And what I can say is that any fool who predict anything in this match needs to have his head read because this has just been so strange a match. there from Gonzalez stepping around that ball you've got to hit the winner from that position and he was able to do it there you enjoying this P-Mac? I, I am now it is yeah I mean it's really this turned into a fun match with all of the nuances You're Gaston Gaudio now. You you just play for smart percentage tennis. Try to keep the ball deep, but relatively down the middle of the court. Gonzo is going for winners quickly in the rallies. Now, is Rog watching this thing and saying, "Why don't you guys just beat your brains yeah, out why not? each other and make it even easier for me?"
Five apiece, 30 all. Spot in the semifinals on the line here. from a professional team. Unbelievable. And you know that's what Gaudio's thinking here. He's down, he gets up. Look at the hustle. He said, hey, just make him hit an overhead here. Put it up there. Complete shank. I mean, if you're struggling on the overhead like he's in, let it bounce. Well, you know he's gonna go for the ace here, right? Of course. Not a big enough point. How close was that? Let's check the mark. <laughs> so it's going to be with his two Unbelievable, this thing. I'll tell you, it's been just uh, bizarro. These overheads from Gonzalo. He should just do the swinging forehand. That one he hits well. Look at this. This was a big point in the second set. That thing's out of our television cameras. And then in this set. Gaudio down, scraping, let me throw up another one. You never know, right? Oh! Those were the highlights? <laughs> oh, he's got it! It's good! Gaudio serving for the match. The, the, these two, I say Gonzalez in particular, have given us some very good entertainment this last two hours and 15 minutes. Uh, and I, I'm feeling for Gonzalez because he's, he's going down, I think, right now in this game. Or not. Yeah. Continuing to scrap and hustle for everything. Try to get this into a tie break in Adela Pena. He's been through the ringer here. Talking about a, an emotional roller coaster for a coach. This match, brutal. Gonzalez has got to be saying to himself at this stage, you know, I had my chances, etc., etc., but I wasn't even supposed to be here. Second alternate flew in uh, from Chile at the very last minute, decided to make the trip anyway. <laughs> Having said that, this is not going to be a great Christmas for this man from. Chile because he's going to remember this match for a long time. He might have to do some uh, serious overhead drills over the holiday season. Match points. Second serve. It's out. 
Just gonna shake your head, P Mac. I don't know what it's just tough, tough loss for Gonzalez. Yeah. But uh, hey, Gaudio hung in. He was completely out of it, being outplayed thoroughly. And uh, he scrapped and clawed and fought his way back into the match. And only one Argentine. Now two actually now into the semis with Nalbandi in there against Davidenko and Gaston Gaudio will take on world number one Roger Federer. Well, that was worthy of a world championship match in terms of excitement and interest. We'll be back.